What does your inner world look like? In the original holy language, we find the word olam, world, universe. It's found in many blessings. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, world. Helem means hidden. World, hidden. Olam, world. Helem, hidden. The root letters of each word include ayin, lam, and mem. Olam, helem. World, hidden. What's the connection? If you ask the average person to give you their perspective on the world, each person will answer you in different ways. An astronomer will tell you that the world is expanding. An environmentalist will tell you that the world is being destroyed. A Newtonian physicist will tell you that it is 99.99% non-matter, the space between the matter, and about action and reaction. A quantum physicist will tell you that the world is chaotically popping in and out of existence. A salesperson might show you the contacts they have and friends or followers they have. A psychologist will tell you about neurons and synapses and subconscious and behaviorism. A politician will probably tell you more about his, his opponent. Everything is relative. What would the Bible say? Ask the Bible. It might tell you that the world, your world, isn't just out here, but it's also in there. It's not out here, it's in there, inside you. But what does your inner world look like? Can you see your inner world? If you were a house and your windows were the eyes that look outward, how would you see what it looks like inside? Is your room a mess? Is there cobwebs and neglect? Has it been cared for in a while? Is it falling apart? Is it gloomy or a happy place? What kind of music is playing? Is it a drama, a comedy, a thriller? Is it well lit or is it dark? Is it safe? Is it sound? We can't so easily see our inner world. After all, our eyes can only see what's outside of ourselves. So what does a curious human do? How do you see yourself? In Ali Shor, Rabbi Shlomo Volbi shares an insight from the Baal Shem Tov. If you want to see your inner world, just look around. How does it appear to you? The outer world simply mirrors your inner world. This is, this is deep stuff. Let's try and crystallize some of these complex ideas. How about a story? Shall we? A rabbi of a city was approached by a traveler who was thinking of moving to that city. The traveler asked, Will I like it here? The rabbi replied, Tell me, why are you leaving the place that you're coming from? The traveler answered, It was a miserable place. No one was friendly to each other. Everyone stepped on each other to get ahead. People stabbed each other behind their backs and slandered each other. There was just so much selfishness and hatred. The rabbi answered, I think you'll find the same people here. The next day, a second traveler approached the rabbi with the same question. Will I like it here? The rabbi replied, tell me, why are you leaving the place that you're coming from? This second traveler answered, I'm so sad to leave the wonderful city. Everyone was so friendly to each other and said hello to one another in the street. People looked out for each other and helped each other. It was such a happy place with kind and considerate people. The rabbi answered the second traveler, I think you'll find the same people here. How could it be that the rabbi would describe his community in two totally different ways to these two travelers? The rabbi knew the impact that our inner world has upon our worldview. Each traveler experiences life based on the inner workings of their inner world. So the city is the same. However, the subjective reality of the citizens determines the experiential reality in the same city. No two people experience the same happenings in the same way. Life's happenings appear to us in different ways, even though the objective reality remains the same. So it is you, the traveler, who will find the same people no matter where you go. You can run, but you cannot hide. Each of our inner worlds determines how we perceive the world and thereby experience the world around us. Do you feel like everyone's judging you? Maybe you're judging them. Do you feel lonely and without friends? Maybe you need to work on becoming more caring and friendly to those in your circles. Do you feel like no one knows your authentic self? Maybe you need to look past the facade that other people put on and see people for who they are. Do you feel like no one appreciates what you do? Maybe it's you that need to work on appreciating others. And finally, do you feel like no one loves you? Maybe you need to learn how to love yourself and others. 
So how do we begin to look more closely at our inner world? Just look around. How does it appear to you? Tikkun olam, repairing the world, is not just running around helping others. That is too easy compared to getting focused, making the time, finding a mentor, and doing the inner work. But first, one must decide to begin. Thank you.